Hi, I'm Lofar Spalter. I'm a DevOps engineer at Secure Things, an instructor and mentor at Op School, an urban sketcher, so you'll see my illustrations on the following slides, and a cancer survivor. And you can follow this QR code to learn more about me on LinkedIn. So a few words about Secure Things in Op School before I start. Well, Secure Things is a startup focused on helping organizations manage and secure their physical devices at scale. And you can learn more about us following this, uh, this QR code to the Secure Things site. An op school is a nonprofit school run by volunteer DevOps engineers like me, but aims to diversify the ops community. Uh, we run a six months intense training course that takes students from various technical backgrounds and transforms them into DevOps engineers. And again, this QR code will let you check us out on our site. So you built a, a GitOps system. Why should you care about teaching GitOps? It's not your job, is it? It's your job to build a system not teach about it. Well, if you don't teach it, people will find ways not to use it. They already have a CI CD system that they know and like. And if you're going to replace it and not make sure that everybody feels comfortable with using your new system, what's going to happen is that they're going to find a way to not use your system. So basically, teaching is advocating for your new system. Your GitHub system is not a self-contained, self-maintained island. You will need help from other people, whether it's help with the move to the new system or with, whether it's help with maintaining and setting up the new system or whether it's helping themselves take care of their own deployment when they fail or if they need to roll back or uh, if they need to... Um, perhaps even set up their own applications. So if you want to spread the work around, you're going to have to teach people about your new system and about GitOps in general. And basically, it's just good manners. So we're going to have a little quick refresher about what push GitOps versus pull GitOps is, because I'm going to mention it a few times in the following slides. So push GitOps is your basic CI CD pipelines. They push changes to your environment based on some sort of commit or merge via webhook. This is basically Jenkins. Pull GitOps is an agent running in your cluster that continuously pulls your Git repo or container registry for changes. I detect mismatch between what's currently running in your cluster and what is found in the GitOps repo or the container registry, it pulls the change into the cluster. So this is basically Argo CD uh, and friends. I'm going to talk about teaching GitOps through four case studies. Each one describes a certain kind of audience. If you don't find your audience in one of these four case studies, that's OK. In the end, I'm going to talk about some general tips that apply to all kinds of audiences. So you can get some help there. Case study one, teaching GitOps to a group of DevOps newcomers. This is basically the op school students um, that we teach, and they're the inspiration for this talk. And, uh, and they are also uh, the inspiration for this uh, illustration. Yes, this is based on a true story. Oh, no, your audience. These people have some background in tech, QA, IT, development but no experience with CI CD as a concept or with the tooling. They have little to no experience with Git. They have little to no experience with Kubernetes or Docker. They have some knowledge of the scripting language, basic cloud knowledge, basic Linux knowledge. How would you introduce GitOps to them? Some things we found that worked. You want to start with a solid grasp with Git, Docker, and Kubernetes, which means that you're going to have to close those knowledge gaps first before you build up on, on them and start teaching GitOps concepts, etc. 
We found that Dockerized VMs are a simpler starting point than Kubernetes, much simpler to understand and to get up and running. And for that reason, Jenkins on Docker on VM provides an easier starting point under these circumstances, which means we start with push GitOps and not pull GitOps, even though pull GitOps is, is all the new uh, all the, is all the new hotness. Um, what we do is explain the building blocks and stick to principles over tools because then you can switch the tools and we all work in a field that has constantly changing tools and i mean next month something can come out that will turn argo cd and flux into something that nobody wants to use um which is why we we stick to we stick to principles of GitOps and not the specific tool that we are using Hands-on is invaluable, which is why our students build their own sort of sandbox system and write their own code, which they then have to deploy to that system and, and change and continually deploy. So they get to learn and they get to make mistakes in a, spa in a space that's safe and with code that they know. So it's an easier place to start in and they get the better feeling for both the flow that they're creating and also actually how to apply the knowledge that we're teaching them. Case study two, teaching GitOps to DevOps. This applies if you're introducing GitOps to an existing DevOps team. And your audience, these are experienced DevOps engineers. They have a good grasp of Git, Docker, and Docker Compose, but they may have some knowledge gaps when it comes to Kubernetes, which is usually the case if we're talking about introducing GitOps to an existing team. They will have experience with CI/CD tools, whether it's Jenkins, Ansible, Puppet, etc. They will have good scripting skills, good cloud provider knowledge, and good Linux knowledge, and they will have no experience with pull Git, pull-based GitOps tools. So, how would you introduce GitOps to them? Some things to apply. First of all, just like in the first group that we discussed, you need to close any knowledge gaps before you can continue. In this case, it's in Kubernetes. You can't talk about GitOps system without having those basics set up first. Introduce the proposed tools and start with the simplest setup possible. App of apps for application sets, for example. Use resources offered by GitOps tools providers. They oftentimes offer courses, certifications, workshops, meetups. A lot of them are free and they're usually very, very good. They aren't good for complete, complete beginners, which is why we don't use them in ops school. But for experienced DevOps engineers, they provide an excellent tool for learning. Again, hands-on is the best for learning, just like in the first group that we discussed. You want to give people a chance to install, to set up, to mess with parameters, to try to get some apps working in some sort of a local cluster or sandbox environment. The biggest hurdle will be to get set up and get flow changes that come with these tools. And this is something that you will want to have as a discussion and not as you dictating how something should work in the GitOps world. And it's usually something that will require several rounds of trial and error and will require an open discussion on equal terms between you and whoever it is that's currently managing the CI CD and the Git setup so that the transition is as easy and as smooth as possible. Case study three, teaching GitOps to developers. This is pretty self-explanatory. You know your audience. These are experienced developers. They're used to working with existing pipelines. They have created scripting and their own pipelines and whole workflows around the existing CI/CD setup. They've invested in it a lot. 
They likely have little to no Kubernetes knowledge. If you're introducing GitOps to them, you're like you you may be the first one that's also introducing Kubernetes to them, and they usually have a robust setup of Git, especially where it breaks. So, how would you introduce GitOps to them? Some things to apply. Again, just like in the first two groups, you want to close any knowledge gaps first. In this case, it's usually going to be Kubernetes. It might be some dark and sketchy corners in Git, but it's usually going to be Kubernetes. Find a champion or two to help you spread the word. This is crucial with this group. Developers usually invest a lot in CICD setups. So you are going to take something that they know and that they have learned to use and that they have invested in, and you're going to change it and into something new that they don't know, and that will require work from them, and that will not be as easy for them to use at first. There will always be some sort of gap and some sort of learning curve. So you, what you want is somebody who is a developer that will champion your new setup that will help you spread the good word and say, oh man, this is so great. This is much better than the current system. Look how it's improving my life. Look how it's making things so much simpler. Look how, how, how I can do all these cool new things that I could not do before. And in the same vein, you want to emphasize the developer from the aspects of the new setup, whether it's the UI, it's the new deployment patterns, it's how easy it is to deploy things or to roll back things or to see where things are. Um, this is important. And let them get a feel for the GitOps agent you use in a sandbox or local environment. This is just like in the two groups that you talked before, something that's crucial. But in this case, it's it's very important for them to get the feel for the system so that they can build their confidence in it and feel more comfortable with it and learn to trust it. Because it may look like magic from the outside, but they have to trust the system. Talk to them about the new Git flow any repo changes and what a git GitOps commit looks like in your new chosen setup. This is important because this is something that they will constantly work with and you need to be open to have a discussion about it. You might not immediately get them to go all the way with exactly your proposed change and they might have some insights that you don't have about the system that they use currently because usually you don't have the whole view of how the CICD works because they oftentimes add things to it that you aren't even aware that they added. So you want to have this part as an open discussion. Again, not dictating, but have a discussion, be willing to listen and not just stand and lecture. And you'll probably get the best results that way. Case 34, teaching GitOps to managers. Know your audience. Unlike the first three audiences we talked about, these people will not have to work hands-on with the tools or with the underlying technology. They will, however, have to prioritize the move to GitOps. And so they need to learn about these tools. They're focused on business value and cost, and you need to understand that. You need to accept that. And they may be familiar with some GitOps tools, but they're usually familiar with them at the buzzword level only. So how would you teach GitOps to them? Some things to apply. Focus on the principles of GitOps more than the tooling. Declaratively described systems, versioning in Git, automatically applied and monitored by various agents. Not, this is how Argo CD works, or this is how Flux works. Um, Emphasize business value. This is crucial and it's something that's going to be the basis of all your discussions with management on your new tools because GitOps comes with a lot of business value, whether it's compliance or whether it's the fact that GitOps allows for faster and safer deployments, quicker fallbacks, quicker recovery, that it helps developers and DevOps teams be more efficient and productive. 
and that it allows you to more easily grow and scale. These are all things that have business value and these are all things that help with business costs and you want to emphasize them. And you want to compare your new system to the current CICD system. You want to put them side by side so that managers will have some sort of reference point as to the changes that you're going to make and exactly where the improvements come in. So let's say in your old system, you could deploy maybe three times a week. In the new system, you can deploy several times a day. In the old system, it took an hour to deploy. In the new system, deployment takes seconds, et cetera, et cetera. Some general tips to end on. Identify your audience, identify their interests, and try to speak to those interests. So a developer might not really be interested in the cost benefits of moving to the new GitOps system, but they will be interested more likely in the debugging options that it now offers them or the cool new UI that allows them to see where things exactly are in the cluster in a very visual and simple way. And also tailor your teaching to honest in terms of how you teach. Some people like YouTube videos more. Some people connect more with in-person teaching. Some people like to just read things. So you want to tailor your material materials also to your audience and not just your content. Don't be afraid to learn in public. That's something that Kelsey Hightower taught us and it has a lot of value. If you're learning something new, invite others to join you on the journey and bring yourself into the process make it personal talk about where you struggled with a new system and what made you think that's really cool and, and, and awesome about about the new github system that you're building it helps people connect and metaphors and stories are also very useful as teaching devices so don't be afraid to add a little some flair to it it makes things much easier to understand and to remember, and it helps break down really complex ideas and notions into something that's more simpler and, and more digestible to your audience, and come to it with the right attitude, a willingness to share, to learn together, patience, and remember, every day someone is born was never heard of The Simpsons, so don't be afraid to say, I don't know, but I can learn. Thank you.